The Scott Trade Center in St. Louis is where the Devils are trying to conclude this three-game road trip on a winning note, and some of them will take the ice tonight with heavy hearts. On the menu this evening, the Devils react to the death of the last man to lead this franchise to a Stanley Cup championship. Pat Burns has died at the age of 58. Also this evening, we'll look back at the life of Pat Burns, a life well spent in the National Hockey League and our tribute to a champion. John McLean is in the coach's corner. He'll talk about the influence Burns had on his coaching experience and also an update on Marty Brodeur who might not play for the next two weeks. Brodeur back home in New Jersey watching on telecast tonight I am sure. Marty Brodeur one of four New Jersey Devils who remain from that last Devils team to win it all back in the spring of 2003. A team coached by Pat Burns who lost a six-year battle with cancer yesterday. He was a winner of multiple coach of the year awards in the National Hockey League. A Devils coach from 02 205 when he officially stepped down to make his fight with cancer a priority. Just the 11th man to coach more than 1,000 games. His teams missed the playoffs only once, and with the Devils, of course, he became a cup champion. This reaction today from some who played the game for him and others who worked closely with him on the road to wing in a goal back in the spring of 2003. I had not known Pat uh, well prior to first time I met him when I spoke to him about the job in New Hampshire and we talked about a lot of things and from that day forward we certainly developed a friendship and of course uh, when you go through what he went through and you share that time with someone uh, you become even closer uh, the type of man he was is he wanted no sympathy he wanted no pity uh, you know right up until the last second uh, I think he's an example to a lot of people uh, when difficult times come and adversity comes, uh, you handle it uh, with dignity and respect for everyone around you. I knew it, I was being coached by a guy who loved the game and had a passion for the game. And that's what he demanded from his players was a, a passion for the game. But I, I remember him most as being a great human being as well who could, who could laugh at things. Um, I remember one night in, in Montreal, we were playing, I, I, I want to say it was Pittsburgh or something, and uh, I was trying to one-time the puck and it kind of hopped on me and I, I had already committed myself to taking the slap shot, but I missed it, it bounced over my stick and they ended up getting a breakaway. They didn't score, but I just remember skating back, you know, to my own end and kind of looking over at the bench and Bernsey's face was beat, beat red. He was laughing so hard he had to bury his head and, you know, here's a Here's a guy who just gave gave up a you know a breakaway, but he was able to laugh at the situation, and and that just kind of you know sums up the type of person that he was. Madden called him last night the best coach he has ever played for. I don't know if you agree or disagree. Yeah, he's right up there, that's for sure. Um, you know, he like I said, he had a way of he was uh, he was able to handle handle the room and handle the guys and. At the same time, uh, you were able to go to him and uh, he was able to tell you what you were doing right and wrong in a, in a way where he was able to reach out and, and do it to each and every guy, which is, which is something special to do. Um, you have 20 different personalities and to get them all uh, thinking and reacting the same way is uh, the ultimate goal. Well, one of the toughest, uh, that's for sure. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you have to have a fond memories of him, uh, especially when you accomplish something special like winning a standing cup together. But, uh, you know, he, his reputation was uh, to be a very tough coach, and, uh, and uh, he was, but uh, he got a job done. From NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, just as they will remember Pat for his success as a coach, hockey fans also will remember his humor, his honesty, his humanity, and his courage as it mourns the loss of an outstanding contributor to the game. The NHL sends heartfelt condolences to Pat's family and friends. Pat Burns' road to the National Hockey League was indeed a unique one, and in the course of a decade and a half, he became a fantastic leader of men, a motivator of what was ultimately a championship team. And the Devils tonight as a franchise are paying tribute indeed to Pat Burns, the champion. His time behind the Devils bench was actually shorter than his coaching stints with three other National Hockey League teams. But it was with New Jersey that he reached the pinnacle of his hockey life. Devils, Stanley Cup champions! Pat 
Burns was a police officer before embarking on a career in the game he loved, and the attitude he took to the streets of Gatineau, Quebec, defending law and order probably wasn't much different than the one he'd take to the rink for 14 years as an NHL head coach. He could be tough, often standoffish with those who questioned his methods for success, yet was a man of principle, quickly establishing himself as a winner at the game's elite level. I consider myself um uh, one of the good coaches in the NHL, and I think I've proved it in the past. I think my record shows it. After coaching junior hockey for four seasons in Quebec, Burns was coaching the American Hockey League Sherbrooke Canadians when he got the call in 1988 to replace Jean Perron. His first season was a remarkable success. 53 wins, a first place finish in the Adams Division before a loss to the Calgary Flames in the Stanley Cup Finals. As a rookie behind the bench, he'd win the Jack Adams Trophy as the league's outstanding coach. For the next five seasons, his teams not only qualified for the playoffs, but won at least one series. That included the 1992-93 season, his first with the Maple Leafs, when Toronto improved by a club record 32 points from the previous season, and despite a third place finish in the Norris division, advanced to the Cup semifinals. Today, he remains the only three-time winner of the Adams Trophy, collecting hardware as coach of the Leafs in 1993 and Boston in 1998. Yet his finest hour would come in New Jersey, five seasons later. His club shut out the mighty Ducks of Anaheim three times in the finals. And it was fitting that the cup-clinching goal was produced not by a prolific scorer, but by a tall, physical mucker and grinder who defined what Burns loved most, the concept of team. A year later, the toughest battles of his life would commence. Twice diagnosed with cancer by 2005, Burns continued to fight. His coaching days were done, yet he remained a fixture at NHL games, scouting for New Jersey, and later adding the title special assignment coach. In 2009, a third battle with cancer revealed a man at peace with himself. I know my life is nearing its end, and I accept that, Burns said. The crying is over. Yet a tribute to Burns was just beginning. By the end of the calendar year 2011, the arena built in his honor at Stansted College in Quebec will be completed. Burns recognized that the odds were against him seeing the finished product. But his love for youth hockey, always evident, came through with the word hope. Hope that one day, Burns said, I'm looking down on it and see a young Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux. 501 victories, a name stenciled into a silver chalice. But the legacy of Pat Burns is simply this. The game has shown us that the best and brightest leave an everlasting imprint. And as long as the game lives, they are never forgotten.